What's going on? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So today I want to talk to you about Lucid. I want to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly from their recent earnings and just my overall thoughts. Before I get into any of that, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. And with that, let's get right to it. So at the time of doing this video, it is down 9.67% as the market tries to digest exactly what the hell was truly said. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Starting off with some of the positives. So looking at this, so their cash and cash equivalents, they had about 2.1 billion. I see that as positive, especially considering they are burning through about 729 million every quarter from operations. That does insinuate they will logically need to dilute, probably tail into Q3, if not during Q4, despite what Peter did state and what is kind of brought up right here about it being the second quarter of 2025. They've never been correct on that once. So again, I was a little bit more pleasantly surprised based on the amount of cash. And obviously a lot of that came from that 1 billion recent dilute. Solution. Their inventory has been getting knocked down. So Gagnon did point that out, that demand has actually increased. It would have been nice for them to focus a little bit more on that because that's good news. Like, And plus, you can see just that there was more deliveries than production for the first time in Lucid's history ever. So again, demand is going up, possibly due to Saudi Arabia. So they did actually state just in passing that in excess of 500 vehicles were delivered to Saudi Arabia in Q1. So I see that as somewhat as a good positive. Mind you, they did state that they're not going to guide for that in the future. So they're not going to kind of break that down. But still, in excess of 500 shows at least there is a certain level of demand. They did reconfirm 9,000 by the end of the year. And an analyst did ask, like, are you just setting the bar low for you to far exceed that? And turns out they're just sticking to 9,000 as of right now. But still, regardless, that's already factored into the price. So I see that as a good thing. They did also bring up about expenses. So one thing that was more of a red flag, if you kind of think of it, but right here, their GNA. 213 million that is massive compared from the quarter prior from 168 definitely shows something of concern which they didn't really break that down and kind of guide on that but essentially they did state that their expenses are going to be kind of under watch and they don't anticipate it for it to go up throughout the whole year so i see that as a good positive that's one thing that they've been stating the last two earnings is that they're going to be controlling their costs and that was one of the big points as well, even just getting the general cost of the vehicle down. And so that's going to be done by a lot of their joint partnerships, their MOUs that they've been signing. And so I see that as a good thing. And it kind of moves them towards profitability. And that was the very first question that was asked from retail. So I'm going to get into that overall. And then aside from that, gravity and also that mid-sized platform so as you can kind of see they did schedule that and mention it like a good seven eight times for late 2024 and then mid-size for late 2026 so i think that's kind of a good thing overall they did state uh once again going over this profitability question peter made a point of saying that it's associated to the mid-sized platform so kind of alluded to they didn't outright say that because of course lucid isn't uh straightforward like that but profitability probably will be in 2027 as i've been stating so i think that again could be a very positive thing so i think overall that's kind of all the positives of course there's a lot of other things that you can kind of spin as positives but still moving on let's talk on some negatives so one negative that i did not like was that michael bell is departing so as you can kind of see based on this 8k right here like I actually really did like Mike Bell. Um, so I actually joined a chat. It was a NVIDIA chat, but he was hosting and it kind of talked on how NVIDIA chips are going to be integrated in Lucid and how that's going to be beneficial. And I asked him some questions he answered and was very, very straightforward. I always appreciate, even if it's bad news, if someone just says it how it is. And Michael Bell definitely did do that. Although on flip side, if you kind of look back, he's legitimately the only individual that's ever sold transaction code S his shares. And he currently does have about 1.44 million um, or 1.1, one of those two. But regardless, uh, that ultimately will be sold probably since he is now departing, but he's going to be staying on as a advisory role up until August 12th, 2024. But regardless, definitely Lucid is losing out on one very good individual. So I see that as a negative. They kind of just said it in passing a little bit, but still. And when it comes to their earnings, 
they didn't actually say anything that was negative. So for full transparency, like I got to give it to them. They didn't say anything negative. Although there's kind of two ways to see that. You can either purposefully omit something by not stating it, or you can say something negative. And they went with the latter, right? They went with, I would rather not bring up anything negative. So I did actually generate some questions that I would have liked to have heard that they didn't really talk on. And again, you can always play devil's advocate. They maybe just didn't want to talk on it, or maybe because these are negatives and they didn't want to kind of dampen the earnings more than what it already had. So starting off, they didn't actually bring up interest rates whatsoever. And the whole EV sector is very sensitive to interest rates. So I find that very interesting that they do maintain uh, the expenses throughout the year when interest rates potentially could be cut throughout the second half of 2024, which would really help their bottom line. So they didn't bring up interest rates. So I see that as somewhat as a kind of a concern somewhat. Uh, they also didn't talk on output from AMP2. So in the past, they've been very open and saying that, oh, they've been shipped 700 shells, they've already produced that and everything else like that. But this time they didn't actually even bring up AMP2 whatsoever. So I don't know if it's correlated with that big recall that did happen in Q1, which again, they didn't really bring up, but still, that is something of concern. And no matter what, once again, it's one of those kind of scenarios, like are you not bringing up because you don't want it to be negative or are you trying to hide something? Is it just, you don't want to kind of convolute something? It's still, it's very weird. Um, the date of the gravity. So I said before the earnings did occur that they needed to give at least guidance on the gravity, not just state that production is going to be blah, 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 but we need reservation dates. And they did say that it was gonna be roughly two months before they start production. So most likely in Q4. So that's not the best because gravity was the next big catalyst for Lucid. And by them saying like, you know what, like it'll be all in Q4, not really giving all that much kind of purpose for investors to buy right now. So it's not necessarily the best. And like I said, they did exceed uh, 500 vehicles being delivered in uh, Saudi Arabia in Q1. But the fact that they won't be guiding for that in the foreseeable future, I see that as a negative only because it's similar to what happened with Apple and Netflix, just how they're not kind of guiding on iPhone sales and subscriber count because clearly they don't want people to focus their success on that. So it shows that at least they're kind of hiding stuff. Um, not taking reservations, definitely I see that as a very big negative as well. And just aside from that though, it's just how things were worded. Because there's a lot of things that they did bring up that like could have been worded so much better. And I think going back over here, this is a very good example. A lot of these retail posed questions. So they kind of talked on profitability, just in and out, not a real concrete answer. And then talking on the price action, they kind of just looped it with profitability. Like, so is the price going to continue to drop up until profitability? So in 2027, like it's just, it's too much open endedness and Peter is really well known for that. And aside from that, this question I had a lot of high expectations for. So is Lucid in talks with any of the legacy automakers to provide battery or motors for production? And he could have easily said, you know what, we're looking at things and like looking at deals. But what he brought up was linkage to this mid-sized platform. So is there a deal for that? But he didn't really answer. So in reality, I don't understand the purpose of these questions, which no matter what, these questions were crap anyways, but Peter just omits things. And this is a very, very good example of that. Will Lucid make a affordable car to compete with Tesla? And clearly this question is oriented towards what Elon recently said is that they're going to have a lower priced vehicle coming out. So that's what the basis is. That's what we wanted to hear. Are you going to do a $25,000 vehicle? But what Peter said is, hey, well, you know what? We already have it. We already have the peer that's in competition with Tesla. And in reality, if that is the case, like Lucid is bombing because the peer, like it's not good. And then he moved on to how the mid-sized platform will be like 48 to 50,000 and that's going to be in competition and whatever else. But that's not what the question was really, really asking. They wanted to know, are you still going to be pursuing that $25,000 vehicle that you have previously stated that you're going to be doing? Then you said, no, like, is it on, is it still in the works? So I think in essence, he just 
purposefully omits stuff. And speaking on omitting stuff, so the gravity, let's talk on that. I did a dedicated video all about the gravity and why they haven't actually opened up the reservations most likely. So in my opinion, not calling Peter and management a liar, but I think that they are lying. So maybe I am because technically for them to say they don't want to make the same mistake as clearly Tesla did with the Cybertruck, but the fact that they're only going to do reservations in like a month, two months before production does start, that's a lie because there's that trademark argument that is kind of underway about the gravity. So this is why they probably cannot launch and do any reservations because it might not actually be named the gravity. And so I've already done a video about this on how essentially trademark arguments could last anywhere from a few months to years. And in my opinion, I'm definitely not an expert in this, but like they're going against someone who has that in their true name, like that name of their company. So they trademarked it. Like who is lucid to somehow use that company's name? So lucid most likely will lose this thus having to change the name as you can kind of even see right here in this sentence. In addition, we may lose our trademark or are unable to submit specimens of use by the applicable deadline for perfect such trademark rights. And then it goes on to say blah, blah, blah. But yeah, so that wasn't really the best news. And in fact, Lucid didn't even bring that up. They just somehow spun it saying, yeah, we're going to not make the same mistake as the Cybertruck. They didn't actually call out the Cybertruck, but we're not going to make the same mistakes. Um, and we're just going to have reservations like one to two months before. So I feel like that was a big lie. And it's kind of ironic because Peter did talk on how they value transparency and that they want to be a very transparent company. Well, you're not. You're definitely, definitely not. And you can tell when Peter was genuine. He actually talks normal and he kind of proved that many times. I think this very first question right here was kind of just random and he spoke perfectly. And then you get to these types of questions where it's kind of sticky or even when analysts were really pressing lucid, then he stuttered like he was stuck on pause or something like that. It was just very embarrassing. And I get it. Some people absolutely love Peter and he is a very smart guy, but I, I don't know. So a lot of these questions and same with Gagnon. I don't know why he's still in a temporary role. And even when it come down to Gagnon, he actually got called out by, I think it was Andre Shepard because Gagnon's speech at the very beginning, when analysts were posing questions, all he did was just regurgitate that like almost for verbatim. And you can see that in the actual transcripts as well. He just literally copied and pasted like it was nothing kind of crazy if you ask me. And even Andre Shepard said like, what the hell are you talking about? That doesn't, your answer doesn't make sense. So in my opinion, both of these people just did not are not in the right roles. And uh, this is probably one of the biggest differences and why lucid is where it is because we can't get actual answers from these individuals because maybe they just don't know, or maybe they just don't want to give negative news. But in my opinion, like I said, this overall earnings, if you kind of look at it for face value was neutral because they didn't really say anything negative, but flip side, well, actually they did say about Michael Bell. So that's kind of negative, but for face value, them omitting a lot of things, I'd see that as a negative. Analysts, once they give their ratings, so far I don't believe any has come down the pipeline yet, but it'll be very interesting to see what they do give because they were kind of aggressive towards Lucid this time around. And I don't know who the moderator was. So there was obviously Peter Gagnon. There was that female who was the official moderator and some other individual, a male. And he was kind of stopping analysts from asking questions that is new. And I like to pay attention to a lot of the minor nuances such as that. So the fact is that maybe Peter didn't want follow up questions. Uh, so it kind of shows that they just didn't want to answer all that much. So I see that again as a red flag. But like I said, overall neutral, just no real reason to buy lucid right now. And that is why exactly it is down 10.28%. So let me know your thoughts on lucid. Give yourself a shadow. Have you been buying? Have you been selling? What was your overall takeaway from the earnings? I know there is quite a lot to talk on. So I might've missed one or two kind of negatives or positives, but like I said, 
I think generally it was overall neutral. So don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I always greatly appreciate that. And with that, I appreciate all of you watching.